In 2019, the Mexican drug lord Joaquin El Chapo Guzman was sentenced to life in prison after a decades-long effort to extradite him to the US to stand trial. The long road that led Chapo Guzman from the mountains of Sinaloa to the courthouse behind us today was paved with death, drugs, and destruction. Convicted Mexican drug lord El Chapo, a federal judge right here in New York City today, sentencing Joaquin Guzman to life in prison plus 30 years. The capture of El Chapo was hailed as the biggest apparent victory in the war on drugs since the fall of Pablo Escobar in 1993. Guzman had risen to power as the figurehead of the Sinaloa cartel, thought to be Mexico's and perhaps the world's biggest drug trafficking network. But what actually is the Sinaloa organized crime group? Alguien se mata, por algo se mata alguien. Puro Sinaloa. This is how the biggest drug trafficking empire in the world operates. And why, despite all the millions of dollars spent capturing him, its power has only continued to grow since the fall of El Chapo. Drug smuggling in Mexico's Sinaloa state goes right back to the roots of the war on drugs itself. When the US first banned cocaine and heroin in 1914, it was farmers in Sinaloa who first spotted the new black market opportunity and began growing opium, a trade that continues to today. Yes, the house is voting to adjourn. The house is voting to adjourn. I know it's literally fucking the same shit that you knew about already. Okay. But it was America's cocaine explosion of the 1980s that fundamentally changed the Mexican drug trafficking business. This is crack cocaine. It's as innocent looking as candy, but it's turning our cities into battle zones. This famously was a lie, by the way. Oh, wait, no, that's not the rake. Wait, was it Bush that did the lie? Or was it Reagan who was like, this was crack cocaine? It was apprehended outside of the White House or something, right? And it was like actually a lie. They that it wasn't, or that was that Reagan that did that one. I think Reagan did that too. I mean, they both probably did it, but in 1985, the giant Guadalajara cartel was broken up into three smaller operations, based in Tijuana, Juarez, and Sinaloa. On reacts. who immediately began violently competing for control of Mexico's drug trade. The Sinaloa cartel came under the broad control of El Chapo Guzman and Ismael El Mayo Zambada. But the Sinaloa groups always operated less as a rigidly organized command structure and more as a loose network of drug traffickers who can work together and collaborate as the situation demands. O sea, hacen una vaca de los narcotraficantes aquí en Sinaloa. Yeah, Congress adjourned. Their structure is more complicated uh, and perhaps more uh, usable for adaptation than the structure of other criminal groups. So the structure is one that, uh, on the one hand, has clear lines of commands, but at the same time, there is enough flatness to it that losing a particular branch or particular segment of the network doesn't bring the whole organization under. Sinaloa were able to use this highly adaptable entrepreneurial structure to outcompete and outlast rival criminal groups who challenge them. Perhaps the best example of this was when, in 2010, a new cartel called Los Zetas challenged the established trafficking groups, bringing almost paramilitary levels of violence to the Mexican drug war. Why do the cartels let them film with their lives intact? What do you mean, dude? Brother, why does the, why do, why do every fucking group that is considered to be like an enemy of the state allow media? They need to do PR, brother. That's how it works. They're doing PR. Whether it be terrifying PR, like, look at how fucking terrifying we are, we'll kill you. Or whether it be even positive PR, like, look at us, we're helping the people in our communities, that sort of thing. Yeah. Los Zetas is a powerful and violent criminal syndicate in Mexico. The uh, cliche is plata o plomo. That is silver, take the money, or plomo, take the lead. Yeah, we saw fucking The group was formed by soldiers dude. who defected from the Mexican Army's elite Air Mobile Special Forces. The Zetas military-style approach of seizing and holding territory allowed them to grow extremely fast. 
and for a time they even appeared to challenge Sinaloa's dominance. But the Sinaloa Federation had more established networks in international drug trafficking. And in the world of organized crime, nothing can compete with the profits from drugs. These are members of the Sinaloa cartel. They're picking up packages of chemicals that have been left floating at sea. These are the raw ingredients to cook fentanyl and other drugs. They find the floating packages, then haul them ashore. By 2017, even as El Chapo was being extradited to the US, the Zetas were already falling apart, while the Sinaloa cartel was using its adaptability and capacity for innovation to increase its criminal power. Ya una vez en tierra, la mercancía se baja y se deja ahí. La mercancía nosotros ni siquiera sabemos realmente quién es el dueño. Todo es como que ni se confianza. Where could they be getting this stuff? Si al entre nosotros mismos también. The Sinaloa Federation was also helped by the fact that authorities in the U.S. Like, they talked about the Zetas being, like, Mexican Special Forces without covering the, the American involvement in that process, which, like I said, the Zetas were Mexican Special Forces that got trained by American Special Forces and literally learned everything about the drug trade from the American Special Forces originally, which is what... JSOC operations are. If you look at Afghanistan, that is precisely what the uh, JSOC operations look like in Afghanistan, finding even tr uh, all the way down to like finding even trade routes into Europe. Notice how all the opium in Afghanistan and, and America only gets its fentanyl from China. Wonder why. Not a single fucking, not a single ounce of opium from Afghanistan which all the poppy fields are controlled or were controlled during the Afghan occupation by the American military. Not a single one of them actually went into the United States of America. They were all, all of the, all of the opium, all of the opium in Afghanistan is responsible for the heroin trade in Europe. Our opium-derived drugs come from Mexico. Fentanyl is artificial, if I recall correct. All of our opium-derived drugs come from Mexico, and all of the chemicals that they need to make the, uh, to cut it, to make it, they come from China. Fentanyl is synthetic. Our fentanyl comes from China. Wait, is it effing again? Shut the fuck up. Stop playing with me. Oh my fucking lord! Do oh my god! Am I am, uh, fuck? Uh, it was a minor f. It was a it was a brief one. Shut the fuck up. It was a brief one. You guys are fucking crazy, dude. It was a blip. It was a blip. It was a blip. You guys are bugging on a cap. No stack. For real, for real. Shut the fuck the US up. The seem to misunderstand the loose network style of their organization. This is made clear by the staggering resources and attention poured into the decades-long hunt for El Chapo. We need to have... The uh, concerted effort of both the say, Mexican the cap, government no stack. and Shut the, the fuck government up. in recapturing Mr. Guzman. There's no doubt that El Chapo is a fascinating figure. Born into a poor family in Sinaloa, he rose to control a drug trafficking empire estimated to turn over upwards of $3 billion a year. But it was a series of dramatic prison escapes, one involving a mile-long tunnel dug straight into a this cell was wild. that turned Chapo into a sort of Mexican... Like, El Chapo, not a good guy, but honestly, that tunnel shit was so crazy, like, you gotta let him have it, you know what I mean? Like, the tunnel shit was so wild, like, you gotta fucking... I'm just saying, you gotta, you gotta kind of let him have that one. CI map of their own drug trade routes from 1981. Yeah. It's ironic that the Golden Triangle is selling opiates to Australia when Australia is like the main uh the the main creator of like pharmaceutical grade uh, uh opium 
Like they they are Australia is like the number one legal trafficker of opium on the planet, which is which is odd when you think about it. But like they still get from the Golden Triangle, uh, opium poppy. The biggest opium dealer is Walgreens CVS. No, I'm saying yeah, but the with the opium that you get from Walgreens CVS is coming from Australia. Did you correct the vice reporter that Chapa was not considered a Mexican folk hero? What the fuck? I mean, I I don't know. I don't know why he said that. A lot of a lot of times though some of these fucking drug lords uh, do get seen as like uh you know le- I mean it's like Pablo Escobar folk hero and the most important target for international narco enforcement. This morning, a massive international manhunt for one of the world's most powerful and deadly drug trafficking kingpins is underway. This is the opening of the tunnel from which authorities say Joaquin El Chapo Guzman managed to escape from the Altiplano federal prison. El Chapo became perhaps the world's most famous criminal. The fact that he twice uh, escaped from prison, including maximum security prison in Mexico, clearly with the help of uh, corrupt government officials. He was very purposeful in cultivating the Robin Hood uh, image of uh, bringing uh, drugs to the gringos and bringing resources to poor uh, communities. That's insurance. But Pablo Escobar did a similar thing as well, which is like in Sinaloa, they are the government. Okay. They're fucking over and like killing Americans, the gringos, by giving them drugs and shit. They're pretty brutal. But ultimately, these are areas that are in dire need of like any kind of assurances, any kind of like structure, any kind of system. And El Chapo Guzman is the one who is offering that to them because they are the government. But of course, it is very rare Am that, I saying it uh, right? Uh, toppling, uh, arresting, or killing uh, the leader. Am I saying it wrong? Movement. Sinaloa? Sinaloa. You said Sinahola? No, I didn't. I don't even know how to. I mean, those, Sinahola? I don't think I've ever said that. You said it wrong once and chat can't shut the fuck up. You did once, but every other time you've been right. ...will bring down uh, the drug trafficking network. In fact, El Chapo's imprisonment changed almost nothing. For one thing, the Sinaloa cartel's co-founder, Ismael Zambada, who always kept a much lower profile than El Chapo, remains at large. And while there have been power struggles between various factions within the cartel, these don't seem to have affected their ability to traffic thousands of tons of drugs across the US border. No cambió para nada. El narcotráfico nunca se va a acabar. Agarraron al Chapo, pero pues ya está otro. Y agarran ese otro y hay otro. Esto no. Y pues no, esto no tiene para cuándo. In 2019, when the Mexican army tried to arrest one of El Chapo's sons, the Sinaloa cartel took to the streets with military-grade equipment, effectively taking over the state capital, Culiacan, until the army backed down and released him. Violence paralyzed the streets of a Mexican city yesterday as security was, forces traded... This shit was crazy. They didn't just, like, trade gunfire. They got fucking owned, dude. Okay? They got fucking owned. Literally. They were just like very openly in the streets, just shooting and killing the Mexican military. Gunfire with heavily armed members of a drug cartel. The son of the notorious drug kingpin El Chapo was taken into custody, then let go. The ability to calibrate violence, to apply it when necessary, but not go over the top in the style of the Zetas, is also central to how the Sinaloa maintain their cash flow. And the Sinaloa cartel, uh and under El Chapo's leadership from the late 1980s made the choice to rule through having support uh, among uh, local people that yes, you will 
uh, kill your rivals, but you are not going to shoot up a disco full of people in doing so. People uh, will um, prefer brutality that's predictable and restrained to brutality that doesn't give anything back. The crucial skill that set the Sinaloa Federation apart from other cartels is that while some were buying heavy weaponry, the Sinaloa cartel were buying politicians. Do the police ever come by here? <laughs> Pero solo pasan por caminos y uno ya mismo, pues muchas veces le da dinero uno o otro. One thing that is surprising is that, like, these guys aren't as tactical as, like, most American-influenced uh, militias are all around the world. Like, they use American weapons, but their gear overall doesn't look as, like, tactical. Even though he does have a Mexican Punisher logo, which is the most tactical shit you can wear, the rest of his gear looks like... The rest of his gear looks pretty non-American, which is surprising. I mean, this is the most tactical shit that you can have, obviously. Took a page out of the Taliban? No, the Taliban now, especially since America left, is insanely tactical. They have a lot of fucking, they have a lot of fucking tactical shit. What are you talking about? You don't remember? Like, they would literally wear their own garb and then put American gear on top of it. It just hasn't prestige yet? Maybe. Buku995, they give the five, get the subs. The current mass bloodshed in the Mexican drug war originates in 2006 when the government launched an all-out war on the cartels. The man largely responsible for organizing that offensive was Gennaro Garcia Luna, Mexico's Secretary of Public Security. In 2019, Garcia Luna was arrested in the US, accused of taking tens of millions of dollars in bribes directly from El Chapo, specifically to protect the Sinaloa cartel and target other traffickers. Luna is accused of taking bribes from especially drug kingpin Juan El Chapo Guzman while providing protection for him. U.S. prosecutors say the bribes could be in the tens of millions of dollars. So what does the immediate future look like for the Sinaloa cartel? They're incredibly effective at capitalizing on the opioid crisis in the U.S., expanding the supply of fentanyl brought over from China. At the same time, they're rumored to be expanding meth export and production in both Europe and Asia. Since uh, the transition uh, post Chapo, an innovator in building networks, relations um, in East Asia with the triads, uh, and now in competition with the triads in places like New Zealand and Australia, uh, as well as in Africa. Though they do face new competition in Mexico, particularly from the Jalisco New Generation cartel, it does look like that for all the fanfare around the capture of El Chapo, the Sinaloa cartel have adapted and will simply go on making billions. It's interesting that they didn't, like, one, mention any sort of, like, American involvement, which I find rather particularly strange. Uh, they also didn't really, I don't know, they didn't go into, like, detail a at all. <laughs> they didn't really go into detail that much about, like, how they were able to seize control of, like, the entire territory, why they're the most dominant. 